In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of her virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. People exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man condemned to you by God, 
with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have children's choir this morning, children's chapel. And I totally forgot about that. So we won't torture our children anymore. <coughs> where we will release them to Children's Chapel. And so it won't be too short, I'll give you an extra long homily. How about that? <laughs> God bless you children.
for you will not abandon my soul to hell, nor let your Holy One see corruption. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with precious blood of Christ as of a spotless, spotless, unblemished lamb. He is known, he was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, 
What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described. But him they did not see. And he said to them, oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther, but he urged them, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scripture to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today, St. Peter, in the second reading, tells us that God raised Christ from the dead and gave him glory. So Christ is alive, gloriously alive. And in today's gospel reading, we have a beautiful account of an appearance of our Lord to two of his disciples on the very day of the resurrection. And notice, that Cleopas and his friend don't immediately recognize the Lord. Their hearts were burning within them while he spoke to them on the way and opened the scripture to them, as they say later. But even so, they don't recognize him for who he is. And why is that? Why is it that they don't recognize him? Well, our Lord says that it's because they were foolish and slow of heart. So what about you? What about you? Do you recognize Jesus when he draws near to you? Or are you 
foolish, and slow of heart. Well, no, Father, I hear you say, that would be you. That's true. That is true, at least as often as not. Still, Christ is alive, and he still does draw near, though we may not, indeed, often do not recognize him. So the question is, how can we recognize Christ when he draws near? Well, here are four clues. The first clue, our Lord said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. <clears throat> well, here we are, gathered in his name, as we said at the beginning of mass, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And here is our Lord. Our Lord is in our midst. And of course, anytime, whenever or wherever we gather for prayer or worship, for a meal in your family or with friends, for a work of mercy that we do together, when we gather in Christ's name, there we may find him. First clue. Second clue, Jesus says, whatever you did for one of the least brothers or sisters of mine, you did for me. So do you want to be near Christ and to know the joy and peace that come with his presence? Well, find someone hungry who's hungry and, and feed them. Find someone who's sick and take care of them. Take another look at that person who stands in need of your forgiveness. Third clue. St. Paul says, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. This living word of Christ is Christ, of whom St. John says, the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So whenever and wherever we approach Holy Scripture with reverence and expectation. We find the Lord present to welcome and feed us. And here's one more clue from today's gospel. While he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. And with that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Let's see, took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. You know, that reminds me of something. What could it be? Well, I remember just yesterday, <coughs> A few hours ago, when I was here celebrating Mass, I took bread, I said the blessing, I broke the bread, and I gave it to the people who had come to Mass yesterday. And as it happened, as I did so, my eyes were opened. So let's try that today, shall we? And when we see him raised above the altar, let us adore. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only 
God who sons God, Lord of the Father, for all ages, God of God, life God, through life, God, life, through God, life, through God, God, through God, God, the God of God, the consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate the Virgin Mary, the King. For our sake, he was crucified for us by life. He sent our death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will be coming in in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is the Son of God and the Prophet. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to God and offer Him our prayerful intentions. For the Holy Father's intention for April, for the spread of peace and nonviolence by decreasing the use of weapons by states and citizens, and for Pope Francis and all those who lead, that they may govern with justice and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the courage to respond to God's call in our lives and awareness to follow where we are asked to go, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the greater reverence and deeper belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, and for our youth celebrating their first communion, that they will remember this day with great joy as they receive the sacrament of love the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their caregivers, that they may trust the Lord as their refuge and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that God may give eternal rest and joy to all whom he has called from this life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray together this centennial campaign prayer, which you may find in your pew rack. Creator God, we acknowledge your presence in St. Peter's community. We thank you for the wisdom, courage, sacrifice, and stewardship of St. Peter's faith community over the decades that helped establish and grow our parish. In you, our people, our ministries, and our families become one. We remain a faithful people, and we thank you, loving Father, for guiding and walking with us on our journey. Gracious God, help us open our hearts and minds to your spirit. Inspire us to make the commitments needed in this time of discernment, challenge, perseverance, and opportunity. Please help us to work in harmony with one another and to lovingly honor the commitments we make to the parish continual campaign. So that St. Peter's Parish will continue to serve future generations as it has our generation and those who support us. May your grace open our hearts to do what is best for our parish and our family. St. Oscar Romero, pray for us. St. Mary, our Heavenly Mother, pray for us. St. Peter, pray for us. Amen.
receive, O oh Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on to the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, 
and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim, in humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled 
with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who've gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 527. I know that my Redeemer lives. Number 527. <laughs> Thank you. 